Well, it's been another gut-wrenching day for the families of the six innocent hostages who were executed by Hamas. And today, the parents of Hirsch Goldberg Pollen, an Israeli-American, laid their son to rest. Hirsch's mother, Rachel Goldberg, gave a very moving, emotional speech. If there was something we could have done to save you and we didn't think of it, I beg your forgiveness. We tried so very hard, so deeply and desperately. And in a seriously sick and twisted move, Hamas wanted to rub salt in the wound and they released chilling new footage of the six Israeli hostages they murdered last week. This clearly a cruel final taunt to their already devastated and grieving families. This is terrorist propaganda, and it shows the captives' last messages before they were executed at close range, believed to have been shot in the head. Hamas has also threatened to kill the remaining hostages and return them to Israel inside coffins if Israel's military pressure continues. Now, this was a tragic day, and one of the hostages executed, literally shot in the head, was an American citizen, Hirsch. Yet US President Joe Biden had the audacity to tell off Benjamin Netanyahu for not doing enough to secure the release of the hostages. Have a look. Mr. President, do you think it's time for Prime Minister Netanyahu to do more on this issue? Do you think he's doing enough? No. No, Netanyahu is not doing enough, according to Biden. Now, the idea that Biden should try to blame Netanyahu after Hamas killed six hostages is insanity. The only message Biden should be sending is one where he puts the fear of God into Hamas. Otherwise, this just all plays into Hamas's strategy. They kill hostages and Israel is blamed. Now, this, of course, comes after Biden has been on holidays for the past two weeks, sun tanning at the beach. Last time I checked, Joe Biden is still the president. He chose not to relinquish that role. So what has he been doing to free his American citizen, Hirsch? Where were the US troops going into Rafa to search for him? They weren't, and Biden was trying to stop Israel going into Rafa at all. It made Netanyahu delay by some three months. Now, irrespective of your view on Netanyahu, the idea that it's Israel that's prevented a ceasefire deal is utterly ludicrous. It's Hamas that has failed to come to the table over and over and over again. It's a point that Blinken has made clear publicly, that Israel has accepted their proposals, but Hamas hasn't. Now, what's worrying is that the reaction to blame Israel for the execution of these six hostages will only encourage Hamas to repeat this ghastly murder again. It encourages more of the same. Well, let's cross live now to Tel Aviv, where I'm joined by Israeli news anchor Lital Shemesh. Lital, thank you for your time. Now, what did you think of those comments by Joe Biden today trying to blame Israel for Hamas's murder of the six young lives? Yes, well, thank you for having me, uh, Sherry. I think uh, you said it beautifully. You know, every person with a bid of uh, a bit of, of sense of understanding the situation could clearly see that Hamas is refusing a deal time and again. Israel is willing to consent. Israel is sending delegations to Doha, to Qatar, to Cairo, time and again, months after months, sending delegations in order to try and achieve some sort of a hostages deal. And Hamas, again and again, is saying no. And as you said, hearing President Biden saying that Netanyahu is not doing enough, two days after six of our innocent Israeli hostages were shot, dead, um, blaming Israel and blaming Netanyahu is, is really a slap in the face. Because after such a horrific attack like that, the U.S. should pressure uh, Hamas, the U.S. should pressure the Palestinians. I don't see any sanctions uh, being lifted upon Qatar, upon the Palestinian Authority. Um, hundreds of trucks are getting into the Gaza Strip, um, humanitarian aid every single day. And President Biden still have the audacity to blame Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu. And I think uh, for a lot of us in Israel, it is a stop 
in the face because you have to understand the bigger point. And the bigger point is the fact that America is in a year of election. Mm -hmm. uh, Biden and Kamala Harris are basically wanting to get ceasefire so they can get a, a peace of mind, so they can get peace in the Middle East. But Israel knows that it cannot leave the Gaza Strip without clearing it from the heads of Hamas, without clearing it from the re remaining of Hamas. We need to uh, take, uh, take measures. We need to bring back our safety. We need to bring back those people who are living on the border with the Gaza Strip to feel and to live in their safe environments. And we cannot do that until we clear out the Gaza Strip from Hamas. So just ordering mm. Israel to take out all the soldiers is a, first of all, you're leaving behind all the hostages that are still remaining because exactly. at the moment, at the moment, Hamas is not really willing uh, to give uh, to give uh, more than 20, maybe 30 hostages. They're not even telling which ones are still alive and which one are dead. And then what do you do? You take out the idea from the Gaza Strip and you're just leaving all the rest to die. Um, and I think that all the pressure at this moment should be on Hamas. Yesterday, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu held a press conference, and he said after this horrific event of Hamas uh, killing, shooting six, uh, six innocent hostages, Israel will respond, and we, will, uh, we are waiting to see what is going to be the IEF response to that. Yeah, I mean, you just think how different the situation might have been if there had been genuine and and, uh, you know, tangible international pressure on Hamas through Iran, through Qatar and, you know, sanctions, other financial pain. It might have been different for the hostages. But, you know, you're right. We hear some of the Western leaders more frequently criticise Israel. The latest news today, Keir Starmer now saying that he's going to suspend 30 out of 350 arms export licences to Israel. So all the pressure seems to be on Israel here. It's a, a massive case of victim blaming. Latel Shemesh, thank you very much for your time tonight.